right uh, let's start so last time we discussed about this uh, orthogonal decomposition theorem and the main idea of this theorem is so yeah uh, so initially yeah suppose we are given an arbitrary vector in maybe five dimensional space as maybe one two three four five okay and then we audi we are additionally given a particular subspace w and suppose we know their orthog yeah, orthogonal basis vector of u1 u2 and maybe u3 okay and then uh, uh, they are yeah, orthogonal to each other and thus linearly independent and uh, the subspace span is spanned by these three orthogonal vectors and then uh, uh, we can decompose the original vector which is not necessarily in our subspace so probably it will be outside of this subspace so uh, we basically decompose this vector as the sum of the two vector so suppose this is y and then uh, it is decomposed into the sum of the two vectors uh, y hat and c okay and then this is a y hat yeah you uh, you uh, you think of it as an orthogonal projection of y onto w, right? And then uh, in terms of a notation, it is written in this form. Proj w and y, okay? So this is the, yeah, the orthogonal projection of y onto subspace w, okay? So that way it is a uh, y hat, okay? So uh, we know uh, how we compute y hat, right? So y hat is computed in this form, right? And then uh, if we have a three vectors, uh, we will have a additional uh, similar term. And that's uh, how we compute the um, uh, y hat, uh, which is an orthogonal projection of y onto w. And then uh, how is, yeah, how do we determine z? I mean, z is just an, uh, automatically determined because we have a fixed y and a fixed y hat, and then we just subtract between them. And then now uh, we can uh, obtain z. And uh, geometrically, this, uh, vector, uh, this vector z uh, <coughs> is this component, right? So we basically decomposed it, this uh, y into the sum of these two vectors y hat and z and this c is perpendicular to uh, any vector from our subspace w right and thus we can say that w is inside of w perpendicular and y hat is inside of w right and so y is decomposed into y hat plus z where y hat is uh, completely inside of w and uh, z is yeah uh, inside of w perpendicular okay so <clears throat> this kind of representation or decomposition uh, of a single vector into these two parts given a particular uh, subspace w so that is called the uh, orthogonal decomposition and what's the theorem about this or orthogonal decomposition theorem so this theorem is saying that this representation given a particular subspace w and its orthogonal basis vectors and then this or yeah decomposition is uh, uh, is obtained always as a unique pair of vectors okay so y hat is unique and thus z is also uniquely obtained because y original y is fixed okay and uh, is there any, yeah, and uh, so we can now understand uh, this representation is unique, but uh, will it always exist? Okay, so is there any vector y that doesn't have this kind of, yeah, orthogonal decomposition, meaning that uh, is there any vector that is impossible to decompose, decompose into the sum of these two vectors where the first one is belonging to w and the second one is belonging to w hat okay but the answer is yeah uh, this decomposition 
is always uh, it always exists okay because we have no problem of obtaining this kind of representation right so given u1 and u2 and so on and then given a particular vector y and then uh, yeah we have no problem of obtaining this representation right and so <clears throat> yeah this will always be a valid orthogonal projection and so uh, this orthogonal projection is uh, always uh, existing and also unique okay so that is main point of this uh, orthogonal decomposition theorem any questions and as a special case as a special case if we choose y already inside of w and then this uh, orthogonal decomposition where y is decomposed into y hat plus z and then this uh, z will become zero okay and so yeah in that case the projection or orthogonal projection of y hat will be exactly the same as y <coughs> okay and then uh, uh, I think I already uh, discussed about this theorem as well so this is about the, um, uh, the notion of the um, best approximation so uh, yeah so we are given a y which is not necessarily inside of w or our subspace and uh, here is our origin over here and then uh, uh, what will be the best approximation of this y okay where uh, this distance is minimized okay satisfying uh, those points is still inside of w okay in that case such a point inside of W that will min minimize the distance between this uh, approximated point inside of W and Y. Okay, so such a uh, best approximation that with the that has the minimum distance to Y will be obtained as orthogonal projection <coughs> of this Y onto Y hat. Uh, sorry, W. So Y hat, uh, which we know as uh, orthogonal projection onto W. So that will work as the best approximation of y okay that will minimize the distance between these two okay <clears throat> so let's just uh, read through them and w be a subspace in uh, rn and y be any vector in the same entire space and y hat is an orthogonal projection of y onto w and then so what is this y minus y hat and uh, it's enclosed by the double double bars in this case it's uh, representing the distance between the two points and this one will be always smaller than smaller than any other i mean any other distance between y and yeah any other points v chosen from w okay so v is a uh, something like so we can be over here over here over here but uh, we have to choose this v from our w right so we should satisfy this condition and uh, if we choose any such vector v and then the distance between that v and the y yeah will be larger than this uh, minimum distance that we can achieve by using orthogonal decompo yeah, uh, orthogonal projection right any questions okay and then uh, uh, how we prove it is based on the um, Pythagorean theorem and uh, even though we uh, formally wrote we didn't formally wrote but uh, yeah we considered it like by forming a triangle right with a 90 degree angle over here and uh, due to this just due to this uh, Pythagorean theorem and then uh, the length 
length between this uh, this line segment and this length is always smaller than this guy okay so we already discussed about it uh, and so <coughs> so that's how we prove this uh, theorem 9 about this uh, best approximation theorem okay so this is the figure uh, that is used uh, for uh, for proving this theorem okay and then uh, <clears throat> using this uh, best approximation theorem uh, let's look at this example so we have y over here and uh, two orth orthogonal basis vector that spans our subspace and then we can obtain y hat as orthogonal projection of y onto the, the subspace spanned by these two vectors right and then <clears throat> let's see um, yeah so this is a y hat and what was y y is negative 1 and negative 5 and 10 Okay, <clears throat> so in this case, <coughs> this vector y is approximated as y hat. And then, what's the distance between them? Yeah, let's just uh, actually compute the distance between these two vectors. So negative 1, negative 5, and 10. And then this is an approximated vector, which is the best approximation, which is, yeah, which is uh, inside of w, right? And then uh, this is the difference vector, and then uh, computing the norm of it, we obtain uh, square root 45. Okay. So that is like, so this uh, square root 45 is the length between y and uh, y hat. Okay. It will be uh, six point something, right? Square root forty-five, right? And then this is the actual length or the distance between the two points. And yeah, uh, if you choose any other point from this W, and then the length between Y and this uh, V will always be greater than this length. 6 point something okay so this is the minimum possible length that you can achieve when choosing this y hat from w <coughs> okay and then <clears throat> the next theorem is uh, uh, about this uh, also normal basis so in case we have also normal basis and not just the um, orthogonal basis okay so we uh, studied about the meaning of the um, orthonormal basis or orthonormal vectors so orthonormal vectors or set of vectors is or orthogonal uh, vector set and uh, each vector has the length of one right so that is the um, orthonormal vector set and also orthonormal basis is yeah also normal vector set uh, that forms or spans the given subspace W, right? Okay. <clears throat> and then, uh, <clears throat> so we need, yeah, in order to understand this, we also need what we skipped last time in chapter two, uh, 6.2. But uh, even using the newer equipment, It has the same problem, so. But uh, you guys have a slide, right? And uh, yeah, I will uh, look at my phone, and uh, using it, I'll uh, explain it again. Uh, explain it anyways. Okay, so. <clears throat> yeah. 
Yeah, suppose we have a orthonormal vector set. In maybe five, uh, five dimensional space, and suppose we have maybe three vectors that are orthogonal to each other, and each vector length is one. Okay. And then uh, let's form a matrix by having them as each column, uh, each column of our matrix. Okay. So this is a U1 and U2 and U3, and let's call this matrix as capital U. Okay, and then let's think of U transpose U. And then uh, the theorem in the previous chapter, 6.2, is saying this is identity matrix. Okay, so let's, yeah, let me just briefly prove that. Okay, so we have U over here. And then uh, <coughs> if we consider the um, U transpose, and then Let's think of these three vectors, okay? And then uh, if we uh, consider U transpose, and then we will have these three vectors as rows, <coughs> right? So this is uh, U1 transpose, U2 transpose, U3 transpose, which are still also or down on each other and uh, having the uh, vector length as one. And one, two, three. Okay, so this is a U transpose and U. And then the product of these two matrix. Yeah, so let's consider the size of it first. What's the size of this resulting matrix? It is three by three, right? So we have three rows and yeah, three by five and uh, five by three. And then, yeah, let's apply the um, inner product perspective when uh, considering or computing this uh, matrix multiplication. Okay, so the first, what's the first element? The second. Right, so <clears throat> in that case, the first element at the one comma one position is the inner product of U1 and U1 transpose and U1, right? So what's the result? It will be one because the inner product with the same vector, and it will be the vector length. But uh, due to the um, orthonormality of these vectors, the length is al already assumed to be one, and so their inner product is a squared length, and then the length is one, and so it will be one. And similarly, what about the element uh, at the position of two comma two? It will be the inner product between u two and also u two, right? And so it will also be one and also be one, right? But what about the um, other uh, elements uh, that are uh, placed in the um, off diagonal part? So for example, in this case, it will be one comma two position, which means we performing we perform the um, inner product with the this guy and this guy. And basically, yeah, uh, performing or computing the inner product between the two different vectors that are uh, assumed to be orthogonal to each other, right? So inner product should be zero. So it will be zero, right? So that way we can easily understand or uh, prove uh, this U transpose U will be identity matrix. Okay, <coughs> and then uh, <coughs> yeah, although it is a, a little bit of an off topic, but uh, so we consider the uh, uh, entire space as a five dimensional space, but uh, how many uh, how many number of also no more or orthogonal vectors can we have maximum how many yeah what is the maximum number of orthogonal vectors can uh, that we can have in five dimensional space five right because orthogonal uh, vectors are as i mentioned orthogonality is much more strict condition than linearly independent one and so in five dimensional space we have maximally yeah, and most five uh, linearly independent vectors. And thus, here in this example, we can also have maximally five uh, uh, orth orthogonal vector set and also uh, five orthonormal vectors, right? And so, <coughs> um, if a matrix has the um, orthonormal or orthogonal columns, 
and then the shape of this matrix should be at least something like this or maybe square maximum as by having the maximum number of ortho orthogonal vectors but this kind of shape is not possible at all right okay <clears throat> Then uh, there was the um, uh, theorem six uh, in chapter uh, six point two, and let's look at the um, uh, chapter. Uh, sorry, uh, theorem seven, which is the last slide of uh, six point two. And then uh, uh, this theorem is uh, starting with the the matrix U that has or also normal columns. Okay, similar to this situation. Okay. So in this case, let's consider this matrix times vector multiplication. Okay, so yeah, let's still use the same example over here where uh, we have five dimensional orthogonal vectors and the number of orthogonal vectors are three, is three, okay? So in this case, the first and the second and the third vector, and this is our U, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, okay? And then uh, let's consider x. So what's the x? I mean, uh, what's the dimensionality of an x? x will be three-dimensional vector, right? And in this case, in the uh, chapter uh, theorem seven, it is saying that the vector length, after uh, transforming this uh, three-dimensional vector by using the transformation matrix U, okay? So suppose, yeah, let's call this vector as y. And then this transformed output or this vector length is preserved. Or it has the same length as, the, as that of the input vector x. So again, x is three-dimensional vector. And y is five-dimensional vector, right? So in this case, even though the vector length has changed, but the vector uh, dimension has changed, but length is uh, still the same. Okay, and uh, proving it is really easy, and uh, we will use a quite useful tool that can change the inner product into the norm, <coughs> and also uh, vice versa. So we know <coughs> this uh, norm squared of a particular vector is x transpose x, right? And so, in this case, uh, ux and transpose and ux. So this is, uh, yeah, so we first uh, take the square of it, right, uh, in order to prove it. And then uh, we change it into the inner product form with itself. And in this case, we know this guy when uh, applying the um, uh, transpose uh, in a dis distributed manner, and then uh, we have to change the order, right? And so x transpose and u transpose, and u, x. And then uh, by uh, applying associative law, we can first compute this middle, middle part, and we already proved this guy, right? And so, this middle part is gone as identity matrix, and thus it will be x transpose x, right? So this is just a mechanical um, proof of this uh, of this property or or this equation. But uh, I want to uh, point out some kind of intuitive understanding about why yeah why it should be true, okay? Okay, so let's just uh, simplify the situation where uh, we have three dimensional vectors and the two orthonormal vectors. Okay, so let me cheat a little bit from our lecture slide. <coughs> so this is a one <coughs> orthonormal vector. <coughs> 81 and over 6. 
Okay, let's consider this kind of U where we have two orthonormal vectors. So if we compute their inner product and then we can easily see that the inner product is zero and then uh, uh, computing the, the length or the norm of each vector and then uh, it will be just one, right? Okay, so <clears throat> in this case, let's consider this x1 and x2, okay? And this kind of transformation by using this U. So in this case, yeah, we, yeah, let's apply the column combination perspective, okay? So, <coughs> I'm wondering whether this guy is uh, faster or not. <laughs> Probably it's not faster. This one, I'll just rewrite it. Anyone, let's see. Okay, right? And then uh, you guys are also, uh, yeah, we also studied about the, the, the coordinate system. So do you guys remember of what's the, what's the uh, chapter number? Uh, does anyone remember? The new coordinate with respect to a given particular basis. Huh? It's uh, somewhere in chapter 2? 2.9? 2.9? Okay. Okay. Yeah, great. Yeah, thanks. Okay. So if you guys remember this, Okay, so <clears throat> yeah, originally we are given this uh, this coordinate uh, representation of five and eight and eleven, for example, and then uh, suppose this guy is in our subspace W, uh, sorry H, where H is spanned by the two uh, linearly independent basis vectors like this, right? And then uh, if we want to represent this uh, 5, 8, and 11 uh, as a linear combination of these two basis vectors. And then uh, yeah, due to the linear independence and then uh, 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 because these two vectors are fully spanning the subspace. And so, yeah, we will have a, yeah. Oh yeah, we will always have the solution. And also the solution is unique because the, the two vectors are linearly independent, right? And so once we compute it or obtain the, the linear combination coefficient by solving this linear system, and then, yeah, suppose this guy is one and two, and then, okay. <laughs> Although it's quite noisy and dirty, but uh, yeah, the logical flow is almost the same, right? So five, eight, 11 is represented as a new coordinate vector as, as one comma two, when using the, the given basis vector as the new axis, right? So you guys understand this notion, right? Right, and so let's also understand this. And yeah, and also we uh, discussed about it when studying the linear transformation, right? So, I can, yeah, in the case of a standard matrix, uh, in the case of two by two matrix, maybe two comma four and three comma one. So suppose this is our matrix A where it is multiplied with the X, okay? So in this case, uh, one zero and uh, zero one and uh, the first column of our standard matrix or this linear transformation matrix will be the function output of one zero and this guy will be function output of uh, uh, zero and one. And then, uh, yeah, so geometrically, we considered this kind of grid line where this guy is a uh, one comma one originally, right? But in this case, we now have this first axis or this uh, standard basis vector is now uh, transformed into two comma four, two comma four, this vector, right? And three comma one, maybe this vector. So this is our like a new x-axis and the new y-axis, or these two, two axes will work as a new uh, coordinate system and their axis, right? And so this uh, one comma one will be 
somewhere over here, right? And uh, maybe two comma one will be, yeah. So in this case, this is the first axis, and so two comma one will be over here, right? So that way we can understand this uh, coordinate changes from this example as well, from the linear transformation perspective. Okay. <clears throat> So using this uh, uh, this perspective, so it is a linear combination, right? And so we can also understand this as like so we originally start from the two-dimensional space as our domain, right? So we can think of this grid, yeah, grid kind of coordinate system, right? And then those new uh, those two new vectors will work exactly like these new axes, right? Okay. And then Okay. So in this case, let's think of this guy. 2 comma 3. And then the vector lengths Vector length will be this guy, right? And then here, this uh, times two and this times three, right? And then this axis is coming from the second axis and this axis is coming from the first axis, right? Okay, and so that way the, the vector length is like this, okay? So that is obtained as two squared and three squared, right? And then uh, let's gradually change it a little bit. What if our first axis, this guy, is not one zero, but two comma zero? In this case, suppose this guy is the coordinate system. I mean, uh, this uh, two comma three is with uh, res is with respect to the new basis of two comma zero and 0 comma 1 is rather than 1 comma 0 okay so in this case <coughs> yeah the vector uh, the this vector will be reconstructed as like 2 comma uh, 2 times 2 comma 0 and 3 comma 0 comma 1 right and so 4 comma 3 will be the actual point and thus the result, I mean, the vector length will be four squared and the three squared, right? And so uh, here, uh, in order to obtain the, the actual vector length, if we have these two coordinates and if the vector lengths, uh, sorry, the, the lengths of the basis vectors are not, no longer be one, and then we have to reflect the lengths of this these two basis vectors separately, right? So this is this is two, but this is not actually the two. But in terms of the lengths, it is actually four, right? And this is three, and then uh, it is corresponding to the uh, the basis vector that has the length of one, and so it, it should be fine, right? So in this case, two times two squared, and three comma three times one squared. So that is that will be our vector length if. This two comma three was the coordinate with respect to this non-standard basis, right? So again, the vector length will also be dependent on our basis vector and uh, its corresponding coordinates, right? And uh, let's also generalize this situation where we have non-unit vectors or those basis vectors that uh, that has that doesn't have the length of one just like this. So the length is no longer B1. And also, let's think of the angle between them. So between the two angles, so this is actually the situation where we are given orthogonal basis, right? But uh, what if uh, our bases are not orthogonal? Just like this, okay? So in this case, so if uh, our second vector Okay, so this is the first vector and the second vector, and uh, if it is maybe two comma three and then 
two and maybe one two three over here right and so in this case the vector lengths will be this guy and yeah suppose this point is 2 comma 3 but what's the basis with respect to uh, it is uh, with respect to it is 2 comma 4 and 3 comma 1 right <clears throat> so in this case Computing the vector lengths will be really difficult, right? <coughs> okay, and then, uh, yeah, uh, purely geometrically, if we uh, know the angle between them, and then uh, if it is, uh, fortunately, like a 60 degree, and then uh, we can do some geometric trick to compute the vector lengths corresponding to this vector, okay? But in general, it will be non-trivial, right? So, yeah, here in this example, my point is, in general, if we change our coordinate system, so it is originally 2 comma 3, and the initial situation was, so this is actually, uh, uh, I mean, this coordinate is represented using the standard basis vector of 1, 0, and 0, 1. And 1, 0, and 0, 1 are actually also normal basis vector that have the lengths of one and they are orthogonal to each other, right? And so in that case, computing the vector lengths will be really easy. But if this vector has now different uh, lengths other than or different from one, and also this vector has its own lengths, which is also different from one, and also initially their uh, vector uh, angle was 90 degree, but uh, their vector angle is no longer be 90 degree. But still, this coordinate two comma three will will be the same. But uh, this kind of when performing this a uh, linear transformation, right? So it is like uh, changing our coordinate, uh, the <coughs> basis, right? But still, we can view it as a uh, same kind of coordinate value. But when computing uh, the vector lengths, uh, after we transform this using this a uh, linear transformation, and then vector lengths will generally be changing right it will be different from the original vector length right okay so so in general the vector lengths will change okay and then uh yeah so in this case uh <coughs> i mean yeah we can just uh, uh, purely look at this uh this yeah this parallelogram and then try to compute the, the length of this vector in this manner but typically uh, if we are given this representation and then the vector lengths will be obtained in this form 2 times 2 comma 4 plus 3 times 3 comma 1 and then we just add them together right right so what is this uh, 13 and uh, 11 so this is the coordinate system with respect to the standard basis of 1, 0, and 0, 1 in our codomain or output space, right? In that case, we can conveniently apply the Pythagorean theorem like this. And in general, this length is definitely different from original vector length. So in general, if we uh, perform the linear transformation, and then the vector length will change. Okay, and now let's think of the um, also normal basis vector and uh, the transformation using those also normal basis vectors. Okay, so uh, back to this this guy. Okay, so <coughs> yeah, using this uh, uh, theorem of this uh, standard uh, matrix. So what is this output or what is the first vector corresponding to? It is the output of one zero, and it is. 0, 1, and its output, right? So yeah, each column in our standard matrix will be the output of the standard basis vector as an input in our, co in our domain, right? So it, it basically, yeah, we are dealing with 
this transformation from R2 to R3, right? So these are the two standard basis vector in our domain of R2, and these are the corresponding yeah, corresponding output vector in R3, right? And so yeah. Even though it is, yeah, the dimension or the, the dimensionality of the domain and the codomain is different, but we can also think of like this kind of thing, right? So starting from one zero, and one zero is uh, mapped <coughs> into this axis, and zero one is mapped into this axis, right? But here, if our uh, standard matrix is uh, uh, is having also normal basis vector. And then one zero. Uh, let's look at the vector lengths. Originally, it was one zero, which is our first vector, first basis vector. And then it is changed into this uh, three-dimensional vector. But what's the length of it? It is still one, right? And also between these two uh, input and outputs, the vector length didn't change at all, right? And then what about their angle as well? What's the angle between one zero and zero one? So they are ninety degrees. And also, these two are 90 degrees, okay? So, <clears throat> in this case, in this case, yeah, let's look at this figure. And uh, it's uh, quite dirty, but... Okay, so let's consider this angle is 90 degrees as well. And the vector lengths of the these two uh, output vector of 1, 0, and 0, 1 are also having the length of 1. And then uh, let's consider this point. Maybe 2, comma 3. In this case, what's the length of this vector? It will be just 2 squared and 3 squared, which are just the uh, vector length of the input vector, 2, comma 3. Right? So that's kind of main point or beauty of maintaining this uh, also normal basis vector. And uh, using them as our standard uh, standard matrix for our linear transformation. Does it make sense? So that way, so that way, we originally have like a two-dimensional vector x uh, here in this example, like maybe two comma three, okay, and then uh, we will have two comma three, right? But that two comma three with respect to the new basis vector which are still also normal basis. Although these uh, vectors are now living in the three-dimensional space, but their span is actually just two-dimensional space, right? And so in this case, the vector length is not, uh, doesn't change even after uh, performing this transformation. Okay? So you can uh, view or understand this kind of transformation by using uh, the the, the matrix uh, that has also normal uh, vector as it is not really the transformation, but it's like, so you have this kind of coordinate system, okay? And then uh, you just embed it, embed it in our, in some, in some three, in three dimensional space, as some plane, right? But this plane, if you look at this plane, and then this guy is maybe the first also normal vector, and then the, this guy is the second also normal vectors, and then uh, if you look at just the plane uh, from the top, okay, and then it will be just like this kind of grid stuff. So these grid and the, these grid will exactly be the same in terms of their length, horizontally and vertically and in terms of their vector, uh, the angle between our bases, okay? So you just uh, cut them and then you just embed it or place it with a particular angle, right? In the three dimensional space or in a higher dimensional space. So for example, if we have maybe four dimensional vector, I mean two of the um, four dimensional vectors that are orthogonal to each other and uh, the same thing will happen. Okay. Originally, we start with the two-dimensional regular grid, right? All having a 90 degree, and uh, each grid will have the um, uh, the line segment length as one vertically and horizontally. And then you will just bring that uh, coordinate system uh, with no changes at all, and then embed it into 
uh, given higher dimension space. Okay, so that is the um, also normal. Uh, I mean the the linear transformation by using the the matrix having also normal basis vector. Okay, so this is a kind of geometric understanding about this. I mean the preservation of the vector lengths. Any questions so far? Okay, so that was the first property, and uh, similarly we can also think of like another property in uh, theorem 7. The theorem 7 is ux and ui <coughs> is x and y. So once you understood this, once you understood this, and then uh, it can also be easily understood. And uh, let's just uh, mechanically prove it or just uh, let's just prove it uh, with no spirit, spirit or deep understanding at all. And so in this case, uh, it will be ux transpose and u y and then x transpose u transpose u and y and so this is a still identity matrix in case uh, in case uh, u has also normal columns and thus x transpose y so what's the meaning of it so again this is like yeah back to this example where we have like a five dimensional column vectors in uh, and uh, three of the uh, five dimensional column vectors that are also normal or some also normal to each other okay so in this case again x is a three dimensional vector and ux is five dimensional vector right so we transformed three dimensional vector into five dimensional vector right but still in this case uh, the inner product between these two different input vectors and then uh, their outputs and their inner product will still be the same. So inner product is preserved. So previously the length is preserved for a single vector and for a two vector even after we transform the, um, uh, these two different input vectors uh, by using this uh, linear transformation and then their inner product will be the same. And uh, this is how we prove it. And why should uh, this uh, inner product be preserved? So that is also simple. And so inner product can be represented as right this guy, right? So previously, due to this uh, coordinate uh, coordinate changes, uh, that has uh, no real changes at all, right? In terms of the um, lengths and the basis vector basis vector lengths and their angles, right? So each vector length will not change at all. Then what about the angle between them? Angle will not also change at all. So in this case, let's look at some uh, some of the um, general situation over here. So, <clears throat> okay. So I'm gonna just just uh, pick up these two vectors and consider their angle. Okay. And then if we just consider these a uh, general situation, and then the the angle between the two basis vectors were previously 90 degree, but now 60 degree. And so it will be somewhere around here. And thus, the vector angle will also change, right? But in case of the special case where we have, yeah, yeah, we preserved uh, the angle of the basis vectors as 90 degree and the vector lengths as also uh, ones uh, for our uh, basis vectors in output space. And then the, yeah, so like this vector and the, this vector and that length. Where is it? Yeah, anyways, yeah, we have two points and then the angle will be the same, right? So in this manner, angle will also be preserved at all, uh, preserved as well. So that way, the inner product will also be preserved, okay? And also as a special case, Let's think of this guy being zero, where, yeah. So if this guy is zero, and this guy will also be zero as a special case, which means if the two vectors in the um, input domain were orthogonal to each other, like this vector and maybe this vector having a 90 degree angle, and uh, let's consider the output of this vector and this output of this vector, and then their angle will also be, yeah, also uh, stay as 90 degree, right? 
so the orthogonality will also be preserved okay so that is the property of this uh, the linear transformation matrix that has also normal columns any questions so far okay that's it for today so yeah let's continue next uh, monday